So we're going to roll right into shoulder ER here. So I have my ball. We're going to tweak a few things with how we go about it today. You might have seen me use this setup before. Honestly, this is my favorite for shoulder external rotation because there's so many variables at play. As much as I like the setup in prone or what we'd call prone, which is laying face down with your arms up on blocks, it's nice. You have a lot of contact with the ground. I find that there's a few too many constraints. So here, I like that I can get my chest even lower and I can turn my chest off to the side and I can adjust my elbow angle. And I can kind of tinker with all these different variables, which are harder to tinker with when you're just on all fours. So with this setup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our arm, you're gonna throw it up on your ball if you have one, or a couch, coffee table, piece of furniture, whatever you have accessible to you will also work. And we can tinker with where we want our elbow in space. So let's say you're looking at my chest from the ground right now. I could have my elbow up at 90 degrees. I can go a little below 90 degrees. I can go a little above 90 degrees. You can tinker with this angle when you set that arm up to adjust and find out where it feels best for you. Once you've got that angle figured out, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant our hand on the ground in front of us. And the other angle that we're gonna tinker with today is seeing if you can get your chest lower to the ground. So if I stay here and stay very upright, then my shoulder's kind of in front of or even behind my elbow or maybe even in line with it. I'm gonna see if I can take my chest and sink it low relative to my elbow. So I might walk that hand way out in front or off to the side for stability on the other side here. But I wanna really sink into that stretch because in today's class, we're gonna be working on horizontal abduction as well. Then I'm gonna throw one other variable at you. I then want you to see if you can like tilt your rib cage or rotate your rib cage would be a better phrase rotate your rib cage, rotate your sternum to the other side of the room ever so slightly, okay? So find your angle of elbow relative to shoulder in terms of height, get it on that ball, get that chest low relative to your elbow, and then see if you can turn your chest away from your ball or away from your object ever so slightly. Once you're in that position, you're then gonna assess, so just loosely gripping the stick, fingers are free, you're gonna see how much external rotation you have in that position. You're gonna walk your hands up just a little higher to get into that stretch. And then from that position, again, you can sink into it a little deeper by lowering your chest a little more and or turning your chest over to the other side of the room. Notice how subtle that turn is though. It won't take much, especially when you get down into that stretch. It'll just be an ever so slight turn of your sternum to the left if you're working your right arm. And then we're gonna hang out in this stretch. Now, as we go through this, I need you to make sure that your chest doesn't start rising and coming back up or start turning towards that ball. You wanna keep it turned away. You wanna keep it low the entire time. Your hand is anchored on that stick, so that shouldn't be moving. I want you to stay in this stretch. I'm gonna talk you through the pails and rails that are about to happen in this position. So I'm gonna come out of this here. Now, when you're down there, when I say so, when we start our pails contraction, you're gonna be thinking about driving that stick like a javelin into the ground by trying to spin your arm inwards as you do so. So if you imagine a little imaginary weigh scale underneath the end of your stick, I want you to give me the highest number you can give me on that weigh scale underneath the end of that stick without your body orientation changing at all. So again, don't let that chest turn back towards your object. Keep it slightly turned away. Don't let that chest come up either. After we've done that, when I say so, we're gonna switch and you're going to attempt to then lift the stick off the ground or think about making that imaginary weight scale as light as you possibly can and that's gonna be you now externally rotating your shoulder. Once again, you're probably not gonna go anywhere. If you are deep into your passive range of motion, that stick is not gonna lift nor do we need it to. And make sure that when you do that, that you get it via your upper arm spinning back and not via your shoulder blade tilting back or tipping back on you. So your collarbone and shoulder blade should stay still. The only bone that should move should be your upper arm bone or upper arm bone if anything moves at all. And like I said, if it moves, then that probably means that you're not in your end range of motion yet. So you've been there for a little bit. If this is really tight for you, and you know it's quite restricted, what I want you to do is hit pause and hang out in this a little bit longer. If you're ready though, you can join me here. We're gonna start with just 10% effort driving that stick into the ground, kind of bleeding tension through our right arm and through our full body. We're gonna scale it up to 20%, 10%, 20%, 10%, 20%, 
jump higher, find 40%, 60%, 80%, and then your greatest, safest, pain-free effort. Driving that stick into the ground, like I said, like you're trying to throw a javelin. Don't let your chest rotate back towards that side, though. Keep yourself turned the other way. Keep your chest nice and low. We're going to keep holding this for another seven, six, five, four, three, two, do not let that chest move, one. Now you're reversing, you're trying to lift that stick off of the ground, but as you can see, I'm not getting anywhere with this. This is an isometric effort. We're gonna keep holding that, keep holding that, keep holding that, don't let up. You're trying to make the now imaginary waist scale underneath the end of that stick as light as you possibly can without letting your shoulder blade cheat and help you and without letting your chest rotate back towards that ball, staying nice and low for another three, two, one, and then you're gonna slowly relax.